Hey, hey, creatives. I am back with another video because if you missed out on the Creative Healing Series Volume 1, you lucked up. I recorded some of it. So before we dive into the creative conversation that we have with the director of Best Friends Not Forever, Diamond Williamson, I know y'all like the tussle. So we ran into some challenges and I did the best that I can. Um, I'll have a video up soon about what the process was of curating and creating event based off of this film coming up shortly. So honestly, in the midst of everything that was going on, I forgot to record from the main video. So you all are getting the backup video, which means it does not include the mics. So you're going to hear some background noise. Some things that we had pushed out of the original screen are going to be demonstrated in this screen here. Um, but the conversation was enlightening and I hope that it enlightens you um, if you are interested in experiencing more of what i created for the creative healing series be sure to click down below the workbook a guide to building sustainable friendships is linked below as well as the let's grow which is a box curated around this film that supports you in engaging in mindful art art that supports you in engaging in mindful art activities to foster the type of friendships that you desire. So go ahead and click on those things below. I hope that you enjoy this conversation and if you did, leave us some comments below. Thank you so much for allowing us to watch this with you. Yeah, it feels special. I feel like it's I feel like it's a film that black women should watch together. Like mm -hmm. so having this experience is beautiful to me. Yes. Well, I will start out by asking you, what does creativity mean to you? I feel like for me, it literally means like bringing to life what I desire to bring to life, mm -hmm. whether that's what I want. Like, I think it, it's not just in art, it's in everything. It's in like, do, how do I create the body that I want to, the life that I want to, mm -hmm. the good that I want to, the relationship that I want to, like, and just like it's literally bringing to life whatever it is that I desire to. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me, how did creativity learn to you being on this path? Yeah, I feel like I was all, I feel like, well, one, I will say my grandmother was an artist. Mm -hmm. And I think that, and my mom was always a person who was like, whatever you want to do, do it. And I think the same thing, I think like with them being these type of people that they were, whatever it is that I wanted to do, whether I wanted to draw, whether I wanted to paint, whether I wanted to like play basketball, whatever it is, they just encouraged me to do it. And so I think that made me very courageous in like going about creating things that I wanted to. Um, but I've always had an artistic bone. Like I was always artsy, I went to art camp, everything. I, I did interior design, I went to college for interior design. So I feel like it was in my blood and my, my family really watered those seeds. Mm -hmm. So how did you transition from interior design Film. Yeah, so um, they actually got rid of the program at my school, at my college, because it wasn't accredited. They couldn't get it accredited, so I went into business. But I did it, I was, I was bored with that. So I actually started photography. And my photography evolved into videography um, because of the clients that I had at the time. I was taking the pictures and they wanted to do video. And so naturally, I was like, okay, let's do it. So I directed their videos and I started starting my own uh, YouTube channel. And my love of creating and all the things that I could make happen evolved until I started my own channel. Like my first video was like on YouTube still to this day. I look crazy as ever. Like, okay. I think that's a part of the creative process. It's like we evolve, right? Yeah, you look it. at that video and you're like, oh my gosh. You know, without that video, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't mm -hmm. have made something that I'm so proud of that I can be so vulnerable that they kind of not did that first video. Mm -hmm. 
So what was it that sparked Best Friends Not Forever? Um, it was a, it was an actual breakup. I think deep in my spirit, I had wanted to do something longer form. Um, I'm a digital girl, so like my stuff has historically been like my original stuff has historically been ten to twelve minutes, ten to seventeen minutes, or even like five minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I've worked in television, I've done longer form, but like my stuff is usually be that. So I wanted to challenge myself to make something longer to make a documentary. And I was having such a challenge with healing from this friendship break because it felt so overwhelming, the emotions. I didn't know what to do with all the, the pain that I was feeling. I felt so heavy. And um, the idea came, it was just an idea at first. And the more I started to talk to, talk to people about it, the more I was like, okay, I gotta do this because so many people have experienced it. Like I remember being at Bar Taco with my friends and we were like eating and I was telling them that I wanted to do this and they were like, oh my God, girl, because yes, because I've been going through this, I've gone through that. And it was just like really special. Mm-hmm. It's amazing when you look at like how your own experience can support the healing of so many others. Yeah, I'm thankful for that. Like, cause I feel like I don't know, I think it's beautiful and I think that like it goes to show how like our art and the things that we make is really beyond the algorithm, beyond uh, money, it's just like it's meant to heal other mm-hmm. people outside of me. Mm-hmm. So I know you and I have had discussions about what it felt like to share best friends and not forever. Yeah. What would you say have been like the overall feelings about sharing your art with the world? Particularly with this experience because it's so personal. It makes me emotional because it's like all I want to do. Like, I think that I came up in a day where it was, I felt conflicted. I was like, I wanted to do what I wanted to do for my career, but then I, st- I need to make money. So I was always just kind of like creating and veer off to try to focus on earning, earning, mm-hmm. feeding my family. I don't have the kids, but feeding my mom. Me, they can buy, mm-hmm. make sure me and my partner are good, we can experience life. And so this feels really emotional to me because it's like, this is the type of work, this is what I want to be known for, it's this type of work, these type of stories. Like, I think we talk a lot about friendship, but not friendship breakups. And not in really this way, at least, and not, I'm really proud of the way this film looks in terms of like color and beauty. And I feel mm-hmm. like we don't see it in this way. So, yeah, yeah it feels, it's felt very good. I am no expert in film photography, but I watched it kind of like I glued at like how the story within itself, um, it can touch on our tough parts, um, but like the videography was so bright to where it just felt very lovely. I love that. I love that. I feel like, like I just, being part of the film when she was younger and being in terms of major, like putting color to the mm-hmm. music together, being an artist and really helped me as a director. Because that was important to me too. Like when you're producing a film, it's already a lot of work because you're like making things happen, booking interviews and uh, booking talent, booking locations, all this stuff. And so to then make sure that it looks beautiful too is a challenge, but I'm like really proud of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what are the characteristics you see? as a creative as a creative I think I'm looking for passion like are you passionate because I think for me being passionate drives a lot of my stuff it's like I just realized it's so important to me about people who are passionate because they're willing to take different types of risks right Mm -hmm. Um, people who are compassionate like people who can be empathetic and and, and see you I think is like really important Um, and then also people who are I would say definitely passionate I would say Compassionate slash empathetic, um, and I would say people who are like curious about me. Like I've been in a lot of friendships where I was one sided. I was the one that was always asking questions. I was the one reaching out. I was the one that was curious. Mm-hmm. And it's like I want people who are curious about me, right? Mm-hmm. Need that in my life. Mm-hmm. What role does community play within your creative process? I think that like it's validating, you know, like because my creative community is validating, or even just like I don't know. I think more than anything, it's validating because being an artist and believing you can create a life out of art and just like putting something out in the world that 
in this world that we live in, where you don't care about likes and all of that, like hearts and like all of that, if you're really close to it from your heart, it's like, it's nice to be that way. Like, mm-hmm. This is scary for me. It's scary to like, it makes my own point into this. It's been my time doing this and hire people to believe, especially when you're filming, when you're in the filming process, you don't know how it's going to turn out. Mm-hmm. I write, I wrote it, I wrote out certain things that I wanted to have. I, I reached out to people that I wanted to be a part of it. I did a call. Like, so many things happen along the way. And you never know what you're going to get when you get to post production. And so to get there, it's like, oh my God. It's everything along the way is just so scary. You never know how it's going to turn out. So having a community is very, I need it. I need to be validated sometimes, honestly, for this journey. Mm-hmm. I think that's a very important part, especially when you talk about like hearts and likes. Like when it comes to our um, work as creatives, oftentimes that's what it's degraded to. Yeah. And, like exactly. how people like it, how you mm-hmm. perform. And it's not about that for me. It's like, what did God say? How do I feel? And that's why I'm not like putting it on the internet. You know, that's why it's, I want to screen it because I want to experience this film with other black women and women in general. They're so important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you affirm yourself to maintain persistence yeah. and hope as a creative? You know, I think it's like so, it's like, it's like a calling that with, even without affirmation, I'm so convicted to do it. The conviction is crazy. Like, I'm so convicted, I can't even think of myself not doing it. I don't know what else I would do. Like, I literally don't know what else I would do. Um, and I think with every pivot or thing that I'm called to do, like, I feel convicted with those things, so I move in that direction. Um, and I think that even the conviction comes from being very spiritual, right? Like, Making space and tapping to my mind and, and being connected to my body in a way. It's like, okay, my body is like, ooh, girl, that don't like that. I'm like, that. ooh, girl, we need something different. Ooh, like my body tells me a lot. Um, so I feel like, like being spiritual and spending time in spirituality has been like really helpful. You touched on something that was a question that I wanted to ask was allowing yourself to connect with your emotions. Like the whole mind, body, heart experience yeah. as a creative, um, and what that is like for you. What, what happens when you don't allow yourself to connect to your emotions? Yeah. I feel like life is so. I feel like what I had to learn as I got older, what I learned in general, like life is so much more than like what we what our output. Life is so much more than like our jobs. Life is about being able to connect with those emotions. Life is about, like about you know being able to like mature emotionally and all of that. Um, and I think it's really important to make space to feel, right? Mm-hmm. To understand why do I feel this way? Um, and I think had I not made space for my feelings, I wouldn't have made this piece because I would have been trying to ignore it. Like, oh, I shouldn't feel this way, but I do. I am mm-hmm. sad. Like, this is my reality. So what am I gonna do with the reality of it all? Let me cope with it. Sometimes pain and sadness can feel like too much, so we try to like avoid it. But I think it's really important to, to feel it. So I'll ask you with that, how did you create your own healing process and follow me through with this project? So to me, the therapy number one, you're like that's my number one. Um, but making this, talking to talk to my partner about my feelings, talking to my mom about my feelings, like talking about talking about my feelings as much as possible. But like really important journaling about it, meditating on it, and not avoiding the grief, like not like ignoring the fact that I was genuinely grieving. And I think what made my process even more challenging, or even more painful, was that I broke up with a friend that was a part of a friend group, and it just everybody just ignored it, and it, everybody just acted like it didn't exist. So it's like. I just felt so invisible to people that I wanted to be seen by. Mm-hmm. So it was like really hard and I'm still dealing with it because as a result, I've had to distance myself from a few more people. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm going through my own process that I share in the documentary at this point. Yes, and it is hard when it's within a friend group mm-hmm. because I recognize that conflict is hard for most of us. Yeah. But when it comes to conflict within friendships, we tend to be very silent. Yes, it's like a, there's like a fear of, I 
like we said in the doc, like there's a fear that it won't, um, that, that that something will be like messed up. Or like, because mm-hmm. what I realized is I was in friend group that weren't talking about those hard things. Mm-hmm. Will you consider another segment for the 40 plus age group pers- perspective on friendships? Yeah, yes, I am. Mm-hmm. I think ultimately, a lot of my work has reflected the age that I am, right? Mm-hmm. And so a lot of the people that are in my work usually reflect the age that I am. I'm in my middle, my mid 30s, but absolutely, like, I, I want my work to expand decades when we talk about Black women and Black women experiences. So, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. I love these questions. I love these questions so much. I just love to talk about art. So, yes, I have. Some comment here that says, Hi, Diane. Thank you for sharing your job with us. I have a couple of questions. One, how often do you invite new friendships and what kind of engagement or support do you look for within friendships, new or old? Oh, it's so good. I think it varies. You know, I think I will say, I think because of my own trauma, I had a hard time seeing people for who they were. So I would always see people for what I wanted them to be. And so as I've gotten older, I'm like, okay, I'm trying to accept people as they are and understand the capacity that they have. Um, I haven't necessarily had new friendships yet. Like the people that I that are in my life now, I've known them for at least a few years and we've connected over like common interests. But I do have like one or two people that I can tell, like we're like friends and I'm like, okay, what does this look like? Like, mm-hmm. do I reach out to them? And I'm in the middle of like that thought process. So I don't necessarily have an answer, but I do. I just want to be seen though mm-hmm. by the people in my life. Like, whether it's like, okay, my birthday was around, happy birthday, or whether it's like just acknowledging the things that I do because I see people so well. Like, mm-hmm. I really do. And it's probably because I want to be seen. So I, I don't know. I think I'm still learning what that feels like because I was in friendships for so long where I didn't feel seen. Mm-hmm. Where I'm learning what it, what I really want, you know, enough to be able to like answer the question. So I hope that's like kind of helpful. I'm new to it at this point. And I think the older we get, it does become harder to build friendships because our values shift. Yeah. Right. Like when you're Absolutely. five, you're on a side with someone. You're like, oh, you want to be my friend? We besties. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, where as we get older, um, we don't think about friendship as like a dating process. Yeah, it, it is. It absolutely is. And I feel like it requires a lot of grace. It requires time and effort. And I feel like sometimes people don't have that. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I do. And it's like, I want people that have that space. I realized mean, there's this one friend that I had that I love her so much. She has so many friends. Mm-hmm. There's no space. There's really no space mm-hmm. to show up as I would like her to show up because there's, there's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But I give her grace, and I have to re—I have to recategorize or reconfigure what I need from her. Mm-hmm. Like I can't need as much as I would like to, and like I would just move along. Yes, and that is something that is um, really important to understand, like from a psychological level, is that when it comes to like close, intimate relationships, we can only maintain about three to five, mm-hmm. and that isn't like just friendships that includes mm-hmm. our relationship with our parents our mm-hmm. children mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. all of those sense. things mm-hmm. right and so assessing your needs right like my needs positive to not get met given the large net that she has so yes. honoring grace you know gratitude for what it does offer absolutely you. absolutely and i think understanding like again like what it is and then moving according accordingly with that. Mm-hmm. Like, even though I want more from her and I want to talk to her more and I love her so much, it's not going to be done. Mm-hmm. So. And the second question is Do you have any plans on continuing this documentary into a different series? I personally feel like it has legs to. Okay, girl, thank you. <laughs> thank you for saying it. <laughs> so, yes, like we have um, bonus. We have a lot of things that we're not able to be included in the doc that we will be sharing. And yes, like the next series that I'm working on that we actually filmed part one of is about finding community. Like it's about taking that next level. Because I feel like it's it's such a scary and vulnerable process to be like, I need friends. Like it feels desperate, but it's like I do. Mm-hmm. I need community. Like I'm 
a different stage in my life. And I, I think for me, one thing I accepted about myself is like, I'm a deep thinker. And it's like, I want more people in my life that are like thinking deeply about life mm-hmm. and that are like, yo, girl, I had this revelation today. Like, I want to be able to call my friend and be like, yo, girl, but my best friend is a mother of three. Like, mm-hmm. I call her every day and talk to her all day. But like, I want that. Mm-hmm. And so my next series is about finding community. Like, my, my work really continues to reflect my own experiences and I'm very excited about it. So that's a great question. So yes, be on the lookout. Be on the lookout. Yes. Now here's what I really acknowledge about you, Diane, is that the humanity you give to the people in your life, that's a beautiful thing. And I think that's a very important part of this friendship. I'm sure it's grown through because I did I was very hard on people because I was hard on myself. So I think the more energy that I have for myself the more compassion I have for myself, the more compassion I became for people in my life. I think that's age and wisdom. In my twenties, mm-hmm. I was super hard on people, but um, I think, and I think that also comes with seeing people for who they are and not what I want them to be. I'm learning that. Yes. As a friend who broke up, um, spurned this feeling, seen it, see your knowledge, and have you had a chance to discuss it with them? So I believe the question is, um, the friendships that have broken up, have they seen the film from what you're aware of? Yeah. And if so, has there been a discussion? So the, the friend that I broke up with, I don't know that she's seen the film, I don't think so, but I will say that I did show one mutual friend the film. And she, I, re- I I think there was another, so I ended up having another friendship breakup after this with somebody who saw the film, with a friend that saw the film. I think her reaction just helped me, like, I was like raving. I was like, that's so raving. Like, everything that she had ever done that made me uncomfortable, that made me like, yo, I should have ended this a long time ago. When I saw her reaction to the film, was like, oh, got it. And we slowly had to end, I had to slowly get to face her out of my life and end up just breaking up with her as well. So I'm currently going through another friendship breakup mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. so and i and i will say i'm not open i'm not open to having a conversation with those people because i realize that it's not necessarily about how they showed up for me as friends or about the friendship i think it's me realizing that these are humans that i don't want in my life mm-hmm. yes, i'm so grateful for the questions that you all have thank you so much oh my gosh i just thank you so much for watching and for joy and just like for asking the questions and there will definitely be more work that I continue to do around friendship, friendship breakups and other things that we experience as black women. Yeah, so how should the people get in contact with you? Yes, I'm at The Real Diamond with the E at the end on Instagram. Um, The website is thirdandwonderproductions.com but at The Real Diamond or the E at the end is going to be how uh, how you define it. Well, I would like to thank Diamond for her time. I'm so, so grateful that you gave me the opportunity to explain this film. Well, thank you so much. It's just like being with black women is my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you. And thank you for allowing your film to inspire this whole experience. Um, I hope that you all are able to not just enjoy us being here in this moment, but if you've um, obtained the workbook, if you've obtained the box, the BFF recovery kit box, I hope that you see how her vision helps inspire mine. Absolutely. Yes. So I'm checking here. Someone says, thank you for this offer, Diamond. Thank you for this offering, Diamond. Greatly appreciate your transparency and vulnerability. I'm grateful and like I would love to with my with my new work share it with you. Yes. I would love to. <laughs> so I hope that you all would love to experience it as well. Oh.